Well, the traveling circus, otherwise known as the New York Jets, heads out west this week to take on the Seattle Seahawks. Seattle is currently installed as a 6.5 point favorite in this game on bet deck. 38.5 is the total. We refer to the Jets as a circus. We're not the first person to do that. The Jets had a bye last week, but you wouldn't know it if you watch any sports news because they're still talked about as much as any team in the NFL. That's mainly because, primarily because, in the offseason, they acquired the most famous football player in the world right now. That is Tim Tebow. Now, Tebow, of course, quarterbacked the Denver Broncos last year to a division, to, to a division title and a playoff win. But he's been nothing more than a backup in New York, and his role and his usage has been a hot topic of conversation as the years progress, and everyone knew this was going to happen. The only way this wasn't going to happen is if the Jets were really good this season. If they came out and started winning and kept on winning, then nobody would question what's going on. But as of now, the Jets have been bad offensively. They're 3-5 and five on the year, on the verge of falling out of playoff contention. Their quarterback, Mark Sanchez, has been awful. So a lot of people are saying, wait a second. Why aren't you using this guy at least more or maybe outright benching Sanchez and beginning the Tebow era in New York? And, you know, the funny thing about that is Sanchez's defenders, the first thing they say is the guy doesn't have any weapons. What could he do? You know, not a good offensive line, not much in the way of wide receivers, not a star running back behind him. I mean, Sean Green, serviceable at best. But, you know, I think that's the best argument for why they should play Tim Tebow, why the time has come for them to play Tim Tebow, because Mark Sanchez is a conventional quarterback. For him to be successful, he needs to be protected, and he needs weapons in the wide receiver position that he, that he can distribute the ball to. He does not have that right now, at least his defenders, and really his detractors even will admit that he does not have that right now. Well, Tim Tebow does not necessarily need that. This guy is an unconventional quarterback. He can create offense himself. So... When the pocket's breaking down, when no wide receivers are open, Tim Tebow can put his head down and get 3 yards, 5 yards, 10 yards, 20 yards. And even though that style of offense, that style of offense and that style of football might not be conventional, Denver showed last year it can be successful. And before you argue with me about that, I, I you know, we we all know Tim Tebow is very polarizing and you people say, "Oh, the Denver's defense won all those games last year and whatever." Hey, Denver's offense in a playoff game last year against the number 1 ranked defense in the league rolled up over 300 yards of passing offense. Tebow also rushed for almost 60 yards. They shredded the best defense in the NFL in a huge situation in the playoff game. So that offense can be successful. A quarterback like Tebow can be successful in the NFL. Now, I don't know if he can be successful on this New York Jets offense because, no doubt, it's more than the quarterback position that's wrong with this Jets offense. They're just not a good unit. And they're up against it this week on the road in Seattle. Seattle fourth in the NFL in yards allowed, third in points allowed. The Seahawks, a great home team. They've won all four of their home games this season. They've covered all four of those games. This is a team that relies on that dominating defense, and they pound the ball with Marshawn Lynch, a top 10 running game. Russell Wilson, their quarterback, I've been impressed with him as a rookie, even though Seattle is last in the league right now in pass yards per game. They're very conservative. Russell Wilson, you hate to use the game manager stereotype, but, but that's what he is. And there's nothing wrong with that. A lot of people look at that as an insult, but Russell Wilson is a game manager, and he's a good one. They don't ask him to do a whole lot. They just ask him to protect the ball and make occasional plays, and he's done a good job of that. Seahawks currently sitting at 5-4 and four on the year. This is a huge game for both teams. Seahawks at 5-4, and four, if they win this game, you know, they're in playoff contention. If they lose to go to 5-5 five and five in the NFC, which is tougher than the AFC, it's going to be tough for them. And the Jets... Just hanging on. If they lose this game to go to 3-6, and six, their playoff hopes are all but finished. So big, big game for both teams. Again, Seattle is a 6.5-point favorite. And I do lean towards the Seahawks here. You know, I thought about this game, and my big drawback, but, you know, the reason I'm not fully endorsing the Seahawks and the reason I'm not sure if I'm going to back the Seahawks is because I'm concerned about the matchup of the Jets' offense versus the, or excuse me, the Jets' defense versus the Seahawks' offense. Because... Seattle is a conservative offense, and the Jets do have a good defense. So I could see the Jets really limiting this Seattle offense and you know having this be a 14-10 type game. And in that type of game, 6.5 would feel like a lot of points, and the Jets might be a good play here as a road dog. And by the way, if you're into parlays, if you're going to try one of the bet tack multiples, and you think the Jets are a good bet in this game, you might want to try Jets and the under, because if this game goes under, the total is 38.5 right now, if this game goes under 38.5, I do think the Jets are going to be a good bet, plus 6.5 points. But I'm not sure. You know, 
Seahawks, even though they are conservative on offense, their strength is running the football. And the New York Jets, despite the fact that overall they've been playing well on defense this season, especially over the last couple of weeks, well, I guess not so much in their last game, but the Jets still have a good defense. I still have belief in this defense, but they do not have a good run defense. Very uncharacteristic for a Rex, for a Rex Ryan defense to struggle against a run. But the Jets, 29th in the NFL right now in run defense. They're allowing 141 yards per game on the ground. So maybe, just maybe, the Seahawks might be able to run the ball right at and right over the New York Jets defense this week. And I'll tell you what, I don't think the Jets offense is going to be able to have much success at all against this Seattle defense. This very well might be. And I say might be because I've said this about three or four times this year. Seems like I was saying it a few weeks ago when the Jets were going up against Houston. But this might be the end of the Mark Sanchez era in New York. I could see a scenario here where the Seahawks are up 14 to 3 or 17 to nothing at halftime. At that point, Rex Ryan just may hand the keys of the offense over to Tim Tebow. We'll see. Uh, you know, the, the whole country will be watching because certainly that's been the number one soap opera followed throughout the NFL this season is the New York Jets and more specifically their quarterback position. So maybe Tebow gets a shot this Sunday or maybe just like he has been the rest of the year, he'll be sort of an irrelevant afterthought that gets in there for three or four plays a game. We'll see. As of right now, I do like Seattle in this game, minus 6.5. But I'll tell you what, if you, if you like the under in this game, if you think no points are going to be scored, then you might want to consider a Jets play. How's that for confidence? <laughs> I like Seattle, but if you like the under, you might want to consider the Jets. Well, hey, uh, you know, I don't know what I'm going to do on this game, but I can tell you that sitting here on Thursday afternoon, I do lean towards Seattle, minus 6.5.